Yeah. Okay, so let's begin today's lecture. So, do you have any questions about uh, about uh, last lecture or anything about modules and modules and so on? Okay, so if there are no questions, let me let me begin. So last last time we saw this correspondence uh, correspondence between Rx modules. So if M is an Rx module, then you can think of it as an R module, and uh, this multiplication by x gives you a linear map phi. Yeah, you know, uh, taking M uh, which takes M to x times M, which is a linear map. And the converse also holds. So if you have an R module together with a linear map. Then you can make it into an Rx module by declaring uh, this uh, the action of x this way. So once you declare the action of x this way, that m goes um, uh, x dot m. So the action of x will uh, in the other direction is that x dot m is e is defined to be phi n. Yeah. And then once you know how x acts, uh, the monomial x acts, then you know how x square or x cube um, will act. Uh, that is forced. Because um, because of the module axiom, so x square has to act by phi composed phi m and so on. So and uh, and then um, once you know for all monomials, then uh, you know, by linearity you know for all polynomials. Yeah, and that is how you define the Rx module structure. So if you are given an R module and a linear map, you can go backwards as well. That's what Peter proved. Okay, and we saw that uh, if you do it, uh, uh, if you first apply theta one, so take an Rx module and cook up this R module and this linear map, and go, then apply theta two, you get you get what you started with. And uh, and conversely, if you start from an R module and a R linear map and uh, cook up an uh, and use that to cook up your Rx module with this recipe. And then again, uh, apply theta one to get the R module and uh, and the linear map. You recover the original thing. Yeah. So this is the correspondence we discussed last time. And uh, um, then uh, then we saw the statements at least of Cayley Hamilton theorem. So this was uh, this is a uh, and this is a. Hmm, uh, instead of rings, uh, uh, so you have, see, you have seen this for fields and vector spaces, and the proof might not have been as illuminating. But this is um, uh, this one hopefully will will be more transparent. So uh, and it's a slight generalization. So let R be a ring and uh, A be an n cross n matrix. Then uh, and the characteristic polynomial of A. A uh, um, a satisfies the characteristic polynomial of A. Yeah, so characteristic polynomial is the, here is denoted by P sub A X, which is determinant of X i minus A. And uh, when you plug in A, you get uh, uh, the zero zero matrix. Yeah. So uh, maybe and R n R n, which is same as uh, um, uh, I mean, once you choose the basis, it is same as this thing. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Uh, I had a question. Yes. Uh, last day you uh, gave a uh, fact that if there is a ring homomorphism from R1 to R2, mm -hmm. and if M is an R2 module, then it can be an R1 module uh, yes. using that ring homomorphism. Yeah. So. If we look at the collection of R modules plus a ring homomorphism from Rx to R, uh, that will uh, give a map to Rx modules, right? Uh, uh, one second. So, uh, um, uh, what are you saying? Say that again. Uh, the collection of R modules plus a ring homomorphism from Rx to R. R modules plus uh, uh, some free ring homomorphism from Rx to R. Yeah. So uh, this is same as uh, uh, the giving an Rx module, right? Yeah. This also. Yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. So phi will induce an Rx module. Uh, so if you take an R module, phi will give you an Rx module structure. Yeah, that's right. So from this, we have a, a map to the set of Rx modules, which is same as the set of R modules plus an R linear endomorphism of the module. Now, yeah. if we fix R and the module M. 
Mm-hmm. Then the set of R modules plus ring homomorphisms from R X to R is same as uh, homomorphism homomorphisms from R X to R, and uh, and the other side will become uh, n R n R of M if we fix R and M. Uh, so say that say that again. Uh, we we get this map from R modules plus ring homomorphism R X to R to mm-hmm. R modules plus R linear endomorphisms of the module. Yeah, but. Mm, yeah, but see every Rx. Uh, so the, uh, the equivalence is not there. So every Rx module, uh, you can't write it as R module plus a ring homomorphism from Rx to R. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying just a map, not an equivalence. Uh-huh. So you get a um, um, so you get a Rx module structure to uh, from here, which is uh, so you get from here you get an Rx module. Yeah. Yes, and sir. from here you get uh, R module plus uh, plus a linear map, yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So what is your uh... now? If we fix R and the module M, then yeah. uh, the upper uh, the R module plus phi R X to R will become home R R X to R. What will become home R X to R? So if, if I fix an R module M and and the ring R also, if you fix it. Yeah, yeah. So then the set of R modules plus ring homomorphisms from R X to R will be same as home R R X to R. Um, so th- this collection is you are saying some equivalence, yeah? No. Yes, sir. Uh, this R module plus phi R X to R. This will be same as home R R X to R. Home, home R R X to R. Home no, yeah, home uh, R in the side. R X to R. R X. So yeah, giving a uh, giving an R module plus. Uh, uh, in this map is same as saying giving an R module and uh, uh, an element of this home. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. And we fixed a module. So this is just this home Rx to R. Yeah, sure. So what is... Uh, and, what would... and this R module plus linear map, this is same as end R M. R module plus linear map is end R M. Yeah. So we get a map from home Rx to R to end M. Uh, is this map going to be a ring homomorphism? Home Rx to R is not a ring. It's it's an R module. Uh, sorry, mo- module homomorphism. I mean the module. Yeah. See, this. Uh, I mean may- maybe you're making things wrong. So this is not going to be something complicated. Yeah. So I'll tell you what happens. So you, uh, phi is a linear, uh, phi is a ring homomorphism. Yeah. So uh, x will go to some uh, some scalar, some element of the ring R. Yeah. So the way this Rx module will work is x will act by that scalar. Okay. You don't get anything interesting as a as an um, new uh, as a very interesting R module structure, Rx module structure. Just that x goes to that. Uh, so the the R module will remain same, and the linear map is just uh, multiplication by phi of x. Okay. Okay. So whatever you are thinking, it doesn't give you anything interesting. Uh, no, very much interesting. It just tells you. Uh, so you are just keeping track of where x goes in this uh, in the uh, which element of R does x go to. That's all you are keeping track. Of. Okay. So it will be a it will it will give you something, but I mean, uh, so it, it will it won't be an interesting map. I mean, uh, um, so th- that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So x will, uh, so any any map like this will be determined by where x goes, and uh, uh, and uh, you know, the linear map you are going to pick pick is that uh, scalar uh, the uh, scalar corresponding to that thing. Okay. Is, does that make makes things clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. So, uh, in, any other question? Okay. So, if there are no questions, let's um, 
uh, let's get to uh, this thing, uh, Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So, uh, uh, so mm, uh, this was uh, this was uh, one. Mm, uh, this was the direct generalization of Cayley-Hamilton theorem. There is another version which is called Cayley-Hamilton theorem, which is the next one, and the proofs are more or less the same. So you'll see that let M be a finitely generated R module and phi in, in be an element of uh, the endomorphism of M such that phi M is contained in I M where I is an R ideal. Then uh, um, phi satisfies a polynomial like this where a sub i belongs to i power i and of course uh, all these all these guys are in in i yeah. so any power of uh, the ideal i is contained in i yeah and uh, and uh, as a consequence of this uh, uh, this uh, abstract version of Kelly hamilton theorem for arbitrary modules you get uh, um, you get what is called Nakayama's lemma. Someone's audio is on. Okay. Um, sir, sir? Yes. Sir, what is that uh, capital I power I? I is an ideal, yeah. So I times J, you know. So it's I times uh, I times I, I number of times. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, so this is what uh, this guy is. Yes. Okay. okay, so uh, so this is, uh, and of course, I. Uh, so now it is clear, right, that it will be contained in, in the ideal I, yeah? So I times J is contained in both I and J, is contained in the intersection. And then we get, uh, uh, as a consequence, we get uh, this, uh, what is called Nakayama's lemma. So if M is a finitely generated R module, such that M equals I M for some ideal I contained in the Jacobson radical of R, then M is zero. So as I said, this is not the version which Nakayama proved. So I'll just um, write a consequence of this, and this which is what uh, essentially Nakayama proved, and this is the useful, uh, useful version let r comma m be a local ring so you remember what a local ring is so local ring means a ring with a unique maximal ideal so i put m as uh, a little m as to be the maximal ideal the unique maximal ideal. Uh, and uh, let um m be a Fine, capital M be a finitely generated R module such that capital M equals maximal ideal times uh, capital M. Yeah, M equals MM. Yeah, then R. Sorry, what happened? Can you are you still connected? Yes. Sir. Yes. It says uh, my sharing has been paused for some reason. Huh. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, um, so such that M equals MM, then um, uh, then what you can conclude is that M is equal to zero. So in fact, you can put M equals I M where I is some proper ideal, then also this, the, the same conclusion holds because I M will, uh, I M will be contained in M M, yeah? And um, if M equals I M, then of course, cap, uh, little M times M will also be equal. M. Uh, so if some smaller module is equal to the old module, then of course, somewhere in between will be equal to the old module. Okay, so, uh, uh, so of course, uh, this corollary follows immediately from the first one because what is the Jacobson radical of a local ring? What is the Jacobson radical of R comma? Maximal ideal. 
is the maximal ideal. Yeah. So if you if you use uh, uh, if you take i to be the whole of Jacobson radical, or in this case maximal ideal, then you apply the first corollary and you get uh, you apply the previous one and you get this one, straight out. No? And uh, we'll see how mm, how you know, the various uh, statement follow from. One after another. Okay. So I mean, the theorem is not a consequence of Cayley-Hamilton theorem, but it, the proof is essentially the same. Yeah. Or maybe one can write it as a consequence, but uh, it's better to. But when the proof goes, uh, the same proof goes, then there's no point bringing more abstraction. Yeah. So there is maybe a way to. Do it. Okay, so proof of Kelly uh, Hamilton theorem. Okay, so this is where we will use the fact uh, this correspondence Rx modules and R modules together with the linear map. Yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, meaning we will uh, we will construct it in this way. Yeah, the Rx module. The correspondence is straightforward, right? The, the constructions are explicit and everything. Just uh, that this idea is in uh, is a good idea. So, um, so uh, if we are given this uh, matrix A, what does that mean? N plus N matrix A. That means we are we are given a linear map from R N to R N. Yeah. So A uh, um, A defines defines a linear map from uh, from Rn to Rn, yeah. Uh, which will maybe, so, so maybe I'll give a name to this matrix A, meaning elements of this matrix A, so Aij, let's say. So, uh, and uh, we will fix a basis. Yeah, so that's that's when we can give this matrix. Uh, so, uh, so, so that's how this uh, this will, so the basis is the standard basis. Yeah, so where does uh, let's say ek goes? So it depends upon you act on left or right, or maybe I'll just write a formula ek will go to ak i a, ei. So maybe the e will e k will pick the kth uh, kth uh, row of a defines a linear map. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we call it phi sub a if you like. Yeah, plus one two. Yeah. So how does uh, phi sub a acts? Phi sub a of uh, Ek. If you think of Ek as, uh, you know what Ek Ek means, right? Ek is is kth entry is one, and just a zero. So I like writing it as uh, column matrix. Yeah. Column vector that is kth spot. Okay. So phi of Ek. If you if I want to pick out the kth row. Um, the action is uh, probably on the uh, yeah so on the on the right yeah so e k times a yeah if I do it on the left then I I pick out the kth column okay so this is how uh, uh, this linear map acts so this is the linear map so now I can uh, I can make R n into an R x module yeah so R n is an R module but uh, now we have a linear map from R n to R n so, so can make the R module Rn into an Rx module. By via, so uh, x uh, x dot ek should be phi a of uh, ek 
which is uh, let's just say summation i equals one to n a k i e i yeah okay so uh, so now um, rn is also an rx module where uh, x acts like this and then you know how how any polynomial will act yeah once you know how x acts you know how any other polynomial will act okay so uh, so the point is um, uh, in a uh, this becomes a uh, this uh, this gives you uh, uh, so this, once you have this rx module structure on rn you sort of uh, um, you can uh, now work with rx uh, uh, now you can work in rx yeah and uh, write down these equations more reasonably yeah? so for instance this uh, this equation so this is true for for all k between 1 and 10 yeah? so for all k between one and so what you get is an x minus uh, um, so maybe I'll uh, write it uh, yeah so a k i yeah time sorry so maybe I'll I'll write it more explicitly okay so so x dot e one minus um a one one e one minus uh, a one two e two i hope i'm writing it correct here yeah? minus a one and e en is zero so uh, x is an element of rx ei eijs are also an element of rx yeah the constant elements so we get this and so on um minus a two one e one or one yeah this is okay plus x dot e two minus a two two e two minus a two three e three and so on minus a two n e n equals zero yeah and this is how you'll get and the last term will be minus a n1 e e1 plus so i'm just listing down uh, these equations and moving all the terms on one side and uh, rearranging so that the coefficients of e1 come first then the coefficients of e2 and so on minus uh, um, um what was it a n n minus one e n minus one plus x e n minus a n n e n equals zero okay so this is how uh, this uh, this set of n equations looks like yeah so now if we if i want to write it in terms of matrix notation what does this mean this means that i have x i minus a the matrix a times uh, so th this is x x minus a1 one right and here it, in the diagonal uh, here in the second equation is x minus a22 two, two, um, and the coefficient of e2 and so on so if you collect it you'll get this times uh, um times uh, so the first one is uh, um yeah so uh times ek is zero for all uh, sorry, so it's, it's the vector, yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll write it in matrix form completely. Times uh, e1 to en is zero. Yeah, this is what we get. Okay. So uh, so I've written uh, written uh, this set of notation, uh, this set of e equations in this uh, in this matrix form. Is, is that clear? 
what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So now, um, so the uh, uh, so what uh, uh, the trick here is that you just multiply by the adjoint of this matrix. Yeah. So um, so if you uh, if you multiply by the adjoint of this matrix, adjoint. So this is an element. Uh, this is a matrix with el elements in Rx. Yeah. Xi minus E is an uh, is a matrix with elements in Rx. So you multiply by adjoint of um, Xi minus A. Which will be an uh, which will be a n cross n matrix uh, with entries in Rx. Yeah. Um, uh, let's call this uh, this and um, let's give this a name. I didn't I didn't give it anything, so maybe I'll call it B here. Yeah. Then um, B times uh, x i minus a times uh, this vector of entries in in our module R n is going to be uh, zero zero zero. Yeah. Uh, so uh, these are zeros in Rn. Yeah, so these zeros are zeros in Rn. So I'm writing a, a, a writing a equation in this matrix notation. Yeah, uh, the, this bunch of uh, equations. So this is how, what linear algebra teaches us. You you can rephrase this in terms of equation. Now what does this become? This becomes determinant of uh, um, so B times. Uh, uh, adjoint of a matrix times that matrix is de uh, is determinant times the identity. Yeah, so this is determinant times x i minus a and times the identity matrix times e one to e n is the zero zero uh, zero vector. So this is how uh, uh, this equation simplifies. Yeah, let me go right uh, the remaining in this this side. Shimi, sir. Yes. So is E1 to E N over here represented as a row vector in the later rows? So now you should think of E1 to E. So e, now you should think of E1 to E N as elements of R N. Okay. This uh, this one was more to say what E K S are. Yeah. E K S are some elements of R N. Uh, is an element of R N which is which is given by this thing. But here, E1 to En, you should think of it as uh, just elements of Rn. And this, uh, this, uh, these, these elements here, zeros, and these zeros are zeros of Rn. Yeah, these are zeros of Rn. Zero of Rn, not zeros of Rn. Zero of Rn. Yeah. So in particular, these entries are not uh, elements of R, but as the zero uh, zero element of the module Rn. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So zero element of so that is that is how you you would set it up this equation in terms of matrix notation, right? Okay. So what does uh, what does now? Uh, so now, if I want to write it again in terms of uh, ordinary equations instead of uh, matrix equation then what we get is that this implies uh, so so what i have done is uh, from matrices over r i have moved to matrices over rx yeah and uh, and work there okay uh, and uh, now what we get is that uh, uh, this uh, uh, so identity doesn't do anything so that tells you that determinant of uh, xi minus a times e i e k is zero for all k k between one and ten yeah so i can drop this i and so it's just that if i multiply this determinant of this guy to to e i then uh, e k then we get zero yeah is that is that clear so this uh, this is uh, this is uh, so Rn is a module over Rx. So this multiplication makes sense. Yeah, this is the scalar multiplication. 
Yes. And what is uh, uh, how, how does this uh, act on uh, vectors of iron that we know x dot. Uh, uh, so this is this is P A X by the way. So this this implies P A X dot e, e K is equal to zero for all K between one and n. Yeah. But how does P P A X act on a vector? It just multiplies uh, with a, yeah, on the right. Yeah, so p a is uh, so uh, so so this implies uh, p a a dot e k is zero for all k between one and n. And this is what uh, this is how the linear map behaves. Yeah, so maybe maybe uh, just uh, just to fill in, I'll put it here this way. Um, uh, so I mean the correspondence we are using. So maybe how does this act on on this? So we plug in phi a here, right? So phi a phi sub a evaluated at e k equals zero for all k between one and n. Yeah, and uh, 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 phi. Uh, so, but this is same as uh, you know. I, this is just a polynomial. So you can first evaluate at e k and then apply. Yeah. So this is. But how do you apply? Um, what is phi of e k? It's just uh, um, e k times a. Yeah. So this is phi a uh, of. Uh, um, so uh, so this 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 is just uh, p of a and uh, you apply uh, you multiply e k here yeah this is how it will come out to be yeah. phi of e k is basically e k uh, e k times a yeah so it's uh, p a of e k is e k times a this is how uh, the linear map acts on uh, on this thing, yeah. So this is zero for all k between one and n. Yeah, but e k is a e k is a basis of R n. It generates R n in particular. Yeah. So of course uh, this this implies that p of a itself is zero. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, I mean, uh, if it uh, if if it sends e k to zero for all k, then any element of R n is a linear combinations of e k. Yeah? So it will send, send and this is because e e one to e e n generate R n. Yeah. So any element of R n will be uh, so it, this uh, this matrix sends any element of Rn um, to zero. So that means that matrix is, is the zero matrix. Yeah. So that completes the proof. Is this clear? Yeah, so I, I, I have written in more steps so that um, yeah, it becomes a little more transparent for you. Uh, I hope I haven't confused you guys. OK. So that completes the proof of uh, the Cayley Hamilton theorem. And um, uh, so for, uh, for the theorem, uh, which follows the Cayley Hamilton theorem, the proof is similar. Yeah, so I'll just tell you uh, how, how, thing, how to change things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this part of the proof will more or less remain the same. Okay, so maybe, um, yeah, so I don't know where to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'll do this way. Okay. okay, so proof of, uh, um, uh, proof of theorem. Proof of theorem. So theorem, which is written here, yeah, that um, 
M is a finitely generated module such that phi M is contained in I M, then uh, phi satisfies this. Uh, this uh, phi satisfies this equation, where the coefficients of A I uh, coefficients these coefficients A I belong to I power I. Okay. So it's uh, uh, it's essentially the same proof. We just have to modify it a little bit. So uh, so we know that. Uh, we know that uh, m is finitely generated. Yeah, so this is where uh, this is the gener generating set of m will replace e1 to e2. So we haven't really used the fact that EIs are a basis in some sense. Yeah, we only use the fact that EI is generated. So that is what uh, uh, we need essentially. So let uh, um, so maybe um, borrowing notations from here. Let e1 to en be uh, generating set, generating set of M. We know that F is finitely generated R module. So generating set of M, yeah. So what does that uh, tell us? Um, so in particular, uh, now um, we have this uh, map, yeah, phi. We have this linear map phi. So it's a statement about, uh, about this map phi, yeah? Phi is some linear map and uh, it's, uh, it's something to do with this phi. Yeah, so phi is a map from M to M, linear, R linear. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so it gives, uh, so you get an Rx module structure on M, yeah? So, in, uh, this, gives an Rx module structure on M, on M via x dot uh, M equals phi M for all M in M, yeah. So now we will, uh, we will apply the same technique, yeah. So instead of uh, uh, phi sub A, now we have phi. Uh, uh, phi, just phi, yeah. So, so x dot e1, uh, e1 is one uh, one of the basis element, is an element of M, yeah, because uh, because M is an Rx module. So multiplying by x, uh, it's actually same as uh, so maybe phi e1. So that I can. Copy the notes more easily. I'll write it here. So note that phi e1 is same as x dot e1, um, or maybe e k. Let's do this. Is same as. Uh, so now x dot e k is an element of M, but M is a finitely generated R module. Yeah. So I can write it as summation a i j a k j um, a k j. A K J uh, J equals one to n for k between one uh, k between one and n. For so for each k we can sorry um, the coefficient I just written the coefficient e j. Yeah. So any element of the module M we can write it as some R linear combination of e one to e n. Yeah. That's what uh, uh, M gen generated by e one to e n. So that's what I have done. So now we are parallel in this setup, yeah? X dot EK is, uh, is uh, summation AKI, EI, and we can run down this, uh, the rest of the proof is same, yeah? So this will imply uh, that uh, X minus, and, uh, uh, sorry, and uh, we also know that, uh, so one more observation which we need is that, uh, so if I, if I just wanted to show that phi satisfies some polynomial equation, then uh, there's nothing more. But we know that phi m is contained in I m, yeah? OK. So, uh, so what we can ensure from here is uh, that, uh, so phi, phi of ek is in I m, yeah? So not only, um, 
we can ensure that uh, is generated by uh, 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 so we can also ensure that this akis are in i so this implies akjs belong to i okay Mm, yeah, so why is that? Yeah, so uh, it's okay. So I mean, x dot ek is some element which can be written as uh, okay. So maybe I'll do some tough work to clarify. Um, to clarify, so uh, x dot ek is some element in I M, which means that uh, x dot uh, ek is uh, equal to summation um, b j. Um, uh, MJ, where B, uh, uh, BJs are in in I. Yeah, this is what the definition of I M is: some uh, elements in I and the linear combination, uh, and some elements of MJ, and you just multiply them and add them. Yeah. So this is what, by definition, uh, an element of I M looks like. Now, each uh, MJ you can write it as uh, so, uh, some linear combination of E K. And so each MJ is uh, uh, alpha J alpha J um, L um, um, E L L equals one to N, if you like. Yeah, and uh, and uh, so. Uh, uh, so if you multiply by bj each of these coefficients lie in i yeah so you can and then you collect all the term uh, all the uh, so all the coefficients of el will uh, will lie in i all the coefficients here in this guy will lie in i yeah so you can make sure that uh, yeah, akjs are in i yeah is that clear now so we get that uh, uh, X dot ek is summation this guy, this guy and akjs are also in i. Yeah. So now uh, this implies that. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, so we hear it's the claim is, like, but not necessarily for all of them, right? Say that again. Like uh, this is a representation of x ek which we get assuming this, in which every coefficient is in i. Yeah, so we can find uh, AK, uh, we can find AKJs such that uh, um, such that x dot ek is AKJ times EJs and AKJs are in I. Yeah. Yes, sir. So but the converse is not necessary to right? As in, uh, if AK, we can write uh, X. Yeah, I see what you are trying to say. Yeah. So maybe the um, so maybe I should write more over. Yeah. This is what your concern is. Moreover, uh, uh, this is uh, implies we can we can choose AJ, AKJ in I. Yeah, is that is that better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, sir. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So that's what uh, that's what the uh, assertion is that you can in fact choose AKJs in in uh, in this. Uh, yeah, so it's not clear. Uh, so it it may, need not be there. May be some cancellations. Yeah. So obviously you can just add one e one and uh, subtract one e one and uh, or some. Um, you know, so because uh, or some something because it's not a basis. Yeah. So uh, some uh, that kind of statement won't be true. That uh, any any linear combination then the the entries has to be nice. That that may not be true. Okay. So, um, so we we get this now. You you just apply apply this um, the same algorithm. So what you get is x x i minus a times uh, this vector uh, this vector of entries in uh, this module uh, is going to be the zero zeros of this module. Yeah, and uh, 
and maybe I'll not repeat it, dot, 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 this implies that uh, 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 determinant of uh, xi minus, so uh, maybe I'll just write that matrix, that, that matrix has a name, yeah? So P sub A of uh, x, which is basically the determinant of this guy. Uh, anyway, I'll have to write, um, yeah, write, I'll write that down anyway, dot, uh, E i e k is zero for all k between one and n. Yeah. But what is uh, uh, so what uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, how does this action work? So now it's not uh, e k dot e k times a some matrix a, but uh, um, x dot e k is basically phi of uh, phi of e k. Yeah. So this implies that p a of phi e applied to phi e k is zero for all k between one and one. Yeah, but e k again generates the module m. Yeah, so that tells you that uh, p of phi is is the zero element. Uh, if you think of it as uh, um, as an endomorphism of m. Yeah, so uh, so it it. Uh, uh, P of E is actually an endomorphism, but uh, 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 since uh, since it takes values, it sends uh, um, a generating set to zero. It will send everything to zero. Yeah, so P of E is zero since E one to E n generates n. So any element in M, you can write it as some linear combination of E1 to EN. And since each of these E1 to EN is sent to zero by P of E, that tells you. That. So this here, I should put in a bracket here. This is how the action works. Yeah, You have to apply P of E and then evaluate it at DK. And this is the R module structure. This is so the definition of that R module structure. Yeah, uh, which imp implies uh, P power N. So P of phi, how does it look like? Uh, it looks like uh, P, mm, so uh, yeah, so maybe now look at the determinant. Uh, so P, a, P a of X is uh, determinant of Xi minus A, which is, uh, yeah, so now you just look at how it, this matrix looks like. So X minus A11, one one, uh, minus a12 minus a1n yeah minus a21 x minus a22 and so on minus a2n and so on minus a n1 minus a n n minus 1 and then final entry is x minus a n yeah so this is what the uh, so it's uh, it's the determinant of this guy not this matrix yeah and uh, and uh, remember each of these ais are in uh, are in uh, um, the ideal i so if you look at uh, what uh, the determinant of this is going to be so uh, you can convince yourself so it's a product of these diagonal entries and then some some off diagonal combinations are there so you can you will see that you'll get x power n Plus, uh, uh, how do you get the linear term? The only way to get the linear term is uh, uh, um, x power n minus one, and uh, the coefficient here will be only one of these ais has to be there. Yeah, so maybe let's call this a one. So it's going to be of something like this, and then the constant term. So you can convince yourself that a one has to belong. Uh, a1 has to belong to i, a2 will belong to i square, a2 will belong to i square, the coefficient of uh, x power n minus 2. So, um, so if you expand this matrix, you'll see that this will happen and so on. A n will belong to x power, uh, i power n. Okay. Okay, so it depends upon how many copies of AIs you'll have to multiply. So each each term will have that many number of AIs, AIJs, yeah. 
by any way, at least you can see that all the AIs are in I. That is uh, that is enough to uh, get the Nakayama lemma. So all the coefficients AIs are in I that at least you can see. Uh, the stronger statement is not, uh, the stronger version that AI belongs to I power I is not uh, that es essential at the moment. Okay. Um, is that clear? So this completes the proof. Yeah. Of the theorem. Okay, so maybe uh, before we get to Nakayama's lemma, we'll take a short break, and uh, after the break, I'll I'll use this uh, this theorem to prove the Nakayama's lemma. Okay. Sir, what was the change you made in algebra course? I haven't made much changes in other. I I may have added the scalar Hamilton theorem, and that's about it. No, sir, timing. Timing? What timing? You were about to reschedule something about algebra quiz. Oh, algebra quiz. Yeah, uh, uh, I thought you said algebra quiz. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll prepone the um, exam to 10.45. Yeah, is that, is that okay with everyone? Do you have anything on Tuesday morning before 11? No, sir. It's an empty slot, is it? Yes, sir. So I can even, so if I start at 10, is that, uh, will that uh, be better for everyone? Then I can start at 10 and then uh, it will be over by 12. So you'll have uh, a couple hours. So, I mean, in fact, it should be over if you, if you, uh, I mean, the uh, exam is not going to be long, so you can even finish earlier, but let's say you have to finish by 12. Yeah, uh, a, a submission, etc. everything has to be done by 12 anyway. So will, will that be easier? Okay, so maybe we'll, we'll do this, um, we'll uh, change the exam to uh, to 10. Tuesday on, at 10, I'll, I'll upload the question paper and, uh, uh, and uh, you'll have, to, uh, you should turn in by, uh, so I give you, usual, so 10, 15 to 11. So you, you should uh, start turning in the exam by uh, 11, 15. And uh, if you have difficulty, you, you email, e email me by 11, 30. And everything closes down by 11, 45 or something. Okay. So we'll follow the schedule. So we'll just shift everything by one hour. Okay, so I'll email, I'll email about it as well. Okay, so let's, um, let's take a, uh, maybe four minutes break and then, uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll prove this, uh, uh, the first corollary Nakayama uh, using that theorem and, uh, the second one, as I said, is, is just a special case. Yeah, so, so we have to apply this theorem um, uh, 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 to, to get this Nakayama's lemma. So we need to know what phi is, yeah? If we want to apply this theorem. So we are given that M equals IM. We want to conclude M is finitely generated and we want to conclude that M is zero, yeah? M equals IM, where I is contained in the Jacobson radical of R. And M is finitely generated. So, and as I said, we want to use the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So, what should be phi? Take phi to be. So here, what is the statement? If if phi m is contained in I m, then we can uh, we can do this, yeah. So what should we take phi? The identity map. Identity map, right? Then identity of m is m, yeah. So that's the easiest thing to do. To take I, I uh, phi to be identity map. Then uh, what you get is that um, uh, identity part. Uh, so. Uh, entity and uh, 
apply apply the theorem to conclude that uh, uh, this has a endomorphism of m so that means uh, identity power n which is same as identity plus a1 identity power n minus 1 which is again identity plus uh, a2 identity square uh, plus uh, an and uh, so an is also thought of as identity. i mean you are all uh, we are all thinking of it as uh, endomorphism of m and m yeah so this is also identity is is zero in n then and yeah but identity is the identity map so this implies implies that um, where so well ais are in uh, some power of i but uh, as i said we only need that uh, ais are in i for all i between one and ten yeah so this tells us that one plus uh, uh, let's call the sum of these ais as uh, a 1 plus a equals 0 where a is uh, a, a equals a1 to a1 plus an and this 0 is in 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 r now yeah in this uh, ring uh, uh, we started with R module, this R. So it's in this uh, chord, this R, yeah. Um, belongs, and this this belongs to I, okay. So uh, so one plus A is, is zero in R. Uh, no, one plus A is not zero in R, but uh, one plus A, um, as an uh, as an endomorphism of m yeah so uh, one plus uh, as an endomorphism of uh, one plus a times i so this is one plus a times i as an endomorphism in in uh, in and sorry in and rm is zero yeah this is what we get but how, uh, but what is uh, uh, what is so what it means is that uh, um, so as i said when whenever you have a uh, um, whenever you have a, a module over a ring you get a map from uh, so, uh, so here we have uh, m is m is i'm writing it m is uh, is an r module then uh, you know how how does an element of r acts on m yeah so uh, so so this this gives you a map from uh, r to n m yeah and r m which is uh, you just take uh, r going to this uh, multiplication by scalar so that is what how this identity uh, goes to uh, so one will multiply by one um, yeah. will uh, will act by one but uh, will act by identity but one plus a how will one plus a act it will act by multiplication by one plus a yeah so so one plus a times m equals zero for all m in m yeah as an as an r module so this is how the r module structure on m is but what do we know about one plus a so maybe this you can you can forget i i'm uh, so i'm just trying to tell you how uh, um, how this action goes, yeah. So multiplication, uh, so if you want to think in terms of endomorphism is this, but uh, if you want to think in terms of scalar multiplication is this. Yeah? 
but what do we know about one plus a? If a is uh, a is in i. It will be a unit over there. Yeah, because i is in the Jacobson radical. Yeah. So remember, uh, whenever you have something in the Jacobson radical, one plus that is a unit. Yeah. So one plus a um, is a is a unit uh, unit in in R as uh, as A belongs to I is contained in Jacobson radical, which implies um, M is equal to zero for all M. Yeah, which implies M is zero. M is the zero module. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah, any questions? So, uh, so all this circus is to show uh, 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 to show that uh, a unit times. Uh, so, uh, whenever you get m equals i m, then uh, what you conclude is that a unit times every element of m is uh, is zero. Using uh, using this trick, you take m uh, the generate. So you um, yeah. So I mean uh, somehow the proof uh, the main proof is in the Cayley Hamilton. Basically, you are taking a generating set of M, and then you are saying that uh, each of these elements can be written as a linear combination of elements of I, and then you just do this adjoint trick to get uh, get that one plus some some element of I is uh, um, times M is zero for all M in M, where one plus A is a unit, so that tells you that every element of M is zero. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, we extend it to nil potent radical or uh, nil radical as well. Nil radical is contained in the Jacobson radical. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I just confused the name. Yeah. So it's uh, it's, it's easier for nil radical uh, and nil, nil potent elements because anyway some um, some power of it is zero. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, stronger for Jacobson. Okay. okay, so uh, so maybe I, I'll stop here, and uh, next time we will we'll talk about Noetherian modules and so on. Okay. So can you scroll down a little bit? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sure. So if you have some questions, I'm here for another two three minutes, but I'll stop the recording. <laughs>